George W. Bush's tax policies did to the deficit what the I only eat fried cheese diet does to your cholesterol. In 2001, the first Bush tax cuts cost $1.3 trillion. Two years later, Republicans passed another round of Bush tax cuts at a cost of $350 billion. Neither of those tax cuts was paid for. They just added them onto the deficit. Republican Senator Orrin Hatch admitted to the Associated Press back in December that during the Bush years, quote, it was standard practice not to pay for things. It certainly added to the deficit, no question. In 2005, the Congressional Budget Office looked at the impact of the Bush tax cuts and estimated that they added $539 billion to the deficit that one year alone. If it wasn't for the Bush tax cuts, the U.S. in that year would have had a budget surplus, not a deficit. Do you remember how George Bush sold the tax cuts in the first place? He essentially said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We can, we can afford to cut taxes. We got a surplus. It'll be, it'll be fine. The growing surplus exists because taxes are too high and government is charging more than it needs. The people of America have been overcharged and on their behalf... I'm here asking for a refund. Ooh, we got that and more, and we got a huge deficit to show for it. Remember when they would complain about surpluses? Yeah. So now, how do you run as a Republican who's in favor of extending the deficit bomb that was Bush's tax policies and also say you're against the deficit? You do that by magic. Republicans are now arguing with a straight face that tax cuts just magically don't affect the deficit at all. On Sunday, Republican Senator John Kyle argued that you should never actually have to pay for tax cuts. And now the top Republican in the Senate is backing him up. Mitch McConnell telling Talking Points memo today that tax cuts don't have to be paid for because, quote, there's no evidence whatsoever that the Bush tax cuts actually diminished revenue. They increased revenue. Despite all of the empirical evidence to the contrary, Republicans are now arguing that tax cuts are good for the deficit, just like fried cheese is good for your cholesterol. You heard Mitch McConnell there say that tax cuts increase revenue to the government. He's making the case that cutting revenue increases revenue. Also, cats love baths. Even George W. Bush's former chief economist has called bullpucky on this sort of ridiculous logic. He wrote recently, quote, I did not find such a claim credible based on the available evidence. I never have, and I still don't. As our friend Ezra Klein wrote today at the Washington Post, what is helpful about all of this magical thinking about math and deficits is that the Republicans are at least making these claims openly now. Guys like Marco Rubio and the House Republicans and John Kyle and Mitch McConnell, they are writing this stuff down. They are saying it on tape. And that lets us show what they are really offering. So here it is, including the math. Here's what Republicans are campaigning on. Right now, the national deficit stands at about a trillion dollars. That's, what we're at. That's where we're at right now if, if nothing happens. What happens if Republicans get elected and they do what they say they're going to do? Well, first, they say they want to permanently extend the 2001 and 2003 Bush tax cuts. So, right? That's fair enough there over the deficit? Did I get that up right? So they want to... What? That's good. Okay. Well, I knew that was going to happen. Wait. Hold on. How's that? See, our wall is slightly less magic. All right, there we go. Uh, they permanently extend the 01 <laughs> and 03 tax cuts. Hey, Rich, can you help me out? Can you help me out? Will you help me with this? There you go. Hold that. All right. That would add $2.3 trillion to the national deficit. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, as you saw from Marco Rubio, Republicans also want to repeal the alternative minimum tax, or the AMT. They also want to permanently end the estate tax and the gifts tax. Doing those three things <laughs> would tack on another $1.1 trillion or so onto the deficit. The first thing that wasn't a tax cut in Marco Rubio's 12-point plan was repealing Obamacare, repealing health reform. You hear that from a lot of Republicans right now, including the top Republican in the House, John Boehner. If you did that, you would add another... Oh... Nineteen... <clears throat> billion dollars, uh, you'd add another $138 billion to the deficit. The next idea from Marco Rubio was another Republican favorite, 
to prevent cap and trade energy legislation from becoming law. If you do that, I bet this is the only one that will actually stick. Watch this. If you do that, <clears throat> you add another $19 billion to the deficit. So that is a grand total of $3.5 trillion. This is what Republicans are proposing to add to the deficit. Right now, our deficit is around $1 trillion. Republicans are proposing to add $3.5 trillion more to it. Thank you very much. Now let them all fall down. <laughs> well done. There we go. <laughs> Don't let the door hit your fiscal responsibility when you're on your way out. All right. <clears throat> joining us now is Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown of Ohio. Uh, Senator Brown, thank you for joining us tonight. You're, you're, you're having too much fun, Rachel. I am having too much fun. Whenever things fail visibly on television, I enjoy myself. <laughs> you do. And we do. Well, thank you. Let, let, me, let me ask, though, if, if there is something that I'm missing aside from good double stick tape, are Republicans but, yeah. essentially campaigning on adding all this tax cut stuff to the deficit? Yeah, I mean, in some sense, what you're missing is you're only telling half the story in, you're in, in this way, that, that not only what they're doing provably increases the deficit, uh, and, and did increase the deficit in the first several years of this uh, decade, this century. We know that. You proved that. We knew that. What else it did is it doesn't create jobs. Uh, in the, I mean, just, just contrast the last two eight-year administrations. During the eight Bush years, three million jobs, net jobs created. During the eight Clinton years, 22 million net jobs created. So I care about deficits, absolutely. But what I care even more about is job creation, that people have a chance to join the middle class. We saw we saw jobs created 22 million in the Clinton years um, because they were responsible about cutting taxes selectively and in increasing taxes selectively and were responsible about what government programs they formed and they dismantled 22 million jobs created and incomes went up in those eight years for the average American then the next eight years the eight Bush years uh, only three million jobs created and that wasn't even enough to keep up with population growth so in that sense there was a relative decline in job creation uh, and wages were flat or worse for the average American. So, and, and to couple with that, you know, what the Republicans did in eight years was they cut taxes for the richest Americans and they deregulated Wall Street and deregulated worker safety. Look what happened in the mine disaster and deregulated uh, in terms of, of safety and environment. Look what happened in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, it's the same story. And the, when I look at who they're running for office this year in my state, the Republicans are trying out Mike DeWine, formerly U.S. Senator, Rob Portman, uh, formerly U.S. Budget Director and Trade Rep under Bush, uh, John Kasich, former Republican Chairman of the Budget Committee in the 90s. Uh, they're trotting them out and they're saying the same things. They want to do the same things as Marco Rubio wants to do. Cut taxes, cut regulation, and that's going to create jobs. No, it costs us jobs and drives up the deficit. The economics are so clear in this, as you pointed out, that it's terrible for the budget and, you know, all the big things they did, tax cuts, the war in Iraq, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and um, the, the drug, drug company and insurance company bailout in the name of Medicare privatization, all that, all those tens of billions, excuse me, hundreds of billions of dollars were charged or were not paid for and charged to our grandchildren. And they have the hypocrisy and the nerve to say that Democrats are irresponsible on the budget. I mean, give me a break. One of the things that, of course, is, is proven not only to be the right thing to do by people who are down on their luck, but also a big economic stimulus is extending unemployment benefits. That is something that you and the Senate have been dealing with over and over and over again as Republicans continue to block it. Do you think the Senate is finally going to be able to get an extension next week? Yeah, I think we are because Senator Byrd's replacement will be appointed by, by Governor Manchin of West Virginia. We need one more vote. Um, but I, I mean, that, that, is, that is the ultimate hypocrisy. They insist, we, you know, they, 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 they give tax cuts to the rich, they start wars, they do a drug and insurance company bailout giveaway, charge that to our grandchildren. All of a sudden now, we have to pay for unemployment benefits for working people who have been in the job market for 20 or 30 years working. They lose their, they lose their jobs. They've paid into this. They, they, Republicans seem to think, Republican senators, 41 of them vote no on, on unemployment time after time after time. They seem to think that unemployment is welfare. It's insurance. You pay in when you're working. You get help when you're not. And for them to say we don't pay for tax cuts for the richest Americans, just add that to our grandchildren's uh, balance sheet. Let them pay that. Put that on their credit card. Yet 
say you, you can't do unemployment uh, compensation unless you pay for it. For, I, I, saw, I, I saw a guy tonight who used to work for Bob Dole, and he, he was incredulous that Republicans today won't bipartisanly extend unemployment benefits. We've always done it. It's countercyclical, meaning when the economy's bad, you want to prime the pump, as you, as you point out on this show, Rachel, that, that that's good economics. Every dollar you put into unemployment benefits creates a dollar sixty in economic activity. So forget the humanitarian cost, the humanitarian issue. It's good economics to, to provide unemployment extension to people who are working hard and lost their jobs. Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown of Ohio, uh, thank you for your time tonight. I feel like uh, I wasn't very clear in explaining this, and you were crystal clear. No, you, no, you, were, you, were, you were very clear. You just didn't mention the fact that they ruined the economy in addition to the budget deficits. But um, you, 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 did, you did really well, as always. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Sherrod. <laughs> nice to see you.